We are already today, and so we want to make it long. Uh, this talk is about uh, SSD only uh, performance in SAP clusters. So, whoever runs SAP clusters knows that works quite well. Uh, it's a good solution to handle storage and stuff. And then you come to the point where you say, like, more performance would be nice. So, you keep adding storage, SSD storage in this case. So, we did this in a real deployment. Uh, the specs look like this. We have 30 OSD nodes, all equipped with 8 SSDs, enterprise scale, I don't want to talk the details, but roughly 1 terabyte per uh, uh, SSD. Uh, each of them capable to do about 40k IOPS. We have a uh, dual port uh, 25G network, so we are also faster than Dr. Telecom, but we put that to SAD. Uh, they have uh, two different single uh, CPUs, uh, 10 cores. Uh, they have uh, 2.3 gigahertz uh, or 3 gigahertz if you uh, use them uh, at full speed. Uh, we had a leaf spine architecture for the network with uh, three availability zones spread to different rooms. So it was not just uh, virtual split, it was a real split, it was network in between and stuff. And uh, we had about 40 nodes uh, we used for get generating the load. Uh, so it's a real deployment. Uh, we stimulated uh, the traditional way of uh, setting up an uh, open stack with SAP as a uh, storage backend. And we want to simulate uh, users hammering our SAP cluster with nasty nodes. So what we did, we tested 4K random writes for all of our, uh, of our clients. To set up this uh, test setup, we used Ansible, so just a little bit of technical background for them who are interested in, uh, to set up the FIO stuff and generate all the necessary disks. We did leave out a hypervisor layer, so we didn't create any VM. We just used the machines directly, but then used uh, RDP disks to test it. So if you see these numbers, it should come out with a good uh, performance. Any guessings how much IOPS we achieved with this setup? Just run. No one's guessing? 30K. 30K! It was a little bit more. It was a little bit more than 1 million IOPS we achieved. And if you think about 1 million IOPS, you think like, wow, amazing. 1 million IOPS which is, as of today, a lot. But if you take the numbers, you just had, then it's not that good. Because it was not more than one million, because this is the overall cluster IOPS. So what you really get is roughly about 330k IOPS for the users, because of the deduplication and stuff. So even with that number, which is quite high, we come back to the numbers uh, this will give us. So, shouldn't we achieve more than 9 million items if you just take the rough numbers from this? Because we have 30 nodes, 8 OSDs, each disk able of 40k items, that makes 9.6 million possible items. So, where they are? Any guesses? No? Okay. The limit is simple. It is set in this case, uh, which is not bad because they are working on it. But the problem is, uh, set was designed back then for traditional split disks. So many of you might know that a normal traditional HDD is able of capable of about 100 items, maybe 150 if it's a, a fast one. And those numbers, with all that we have, would be much lower than what an SSD can be. So what is the limit? There is a more or less limit based from the code that your OSD demon is uh, written in, which limits SEF currently to roughly 500 items per gigahertz you have in your OSDs, <coughs> or OSD nodes, sorry. So from the specs we had 30 nodes, two processors, each of them have 10 cores, capable of doing 3 gigahertz each, we have a total of 1,800 gigahertz in our cluster, <coughs> and this would be more or less 900,000 IOPS 
You can take a few, so the, the 400 and the 500 IOPS is not a strict number, it's more like rule of thumb. So you see we achieved even more than the 900 we would use by mathematics, but we are not far away from that. But currently there is uh, the test went on with the uh, new story of market, so it's not that we use the old five-score stuff and we were limited by that. And the difference between blue store and five store in this setup was only like maybe 10 percent. So it's not like the, you can get double the speed what you usually would get with other setups. In this case, it was roughly about 10 percent. So in this case, uh, we maxed out our OSD nodes completely. So we spotted that the uh, CPU are completely maxed out. Systems were still responsible, there were no problems like flooding or speeds or stuff like that. Self behaved just like self should behave, it was stable and worked, uh, worked well, but the limit was reached. Whatever we did with tuning, we got a lot of time to tune to the self cluster, we weren't able to go beyond that limit. So, what would be a solution for that? There are different solutions. Uh, I haven't written some of them on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the presentation right now because they are, they are different. The best solution is simple. We need a rewrite of the OSD demon. This is what currently is more or less planned for the next one to two releases because uh, SSDs become more and more yeah, enterprise standard for some setups like that. Um, so you need to achieve more than the 500 IOPS. If we just take the numbers back from what the service could achieve, one server should be able to reach about 30k IOPS. If you use normal disks, you could put plenty of them in the box. But going SSD-wise, even one OSD could probably do more than the 30k IOPS. So you would end up in a setup with one OSD per node. And this is probably not going to be a cheap setup. Because then the SSD is no longer the critical part of the cost. Um, so, for that setup, if you plan to use a SSD only set tool in some cases, because you need something like that, be aware that you will hit limits in sets before you even hit your hardware limits. We tested everything we can, we did the NUMA, the NUMA stuff, we did uh, offloading, we did uh, even some uh, tests with uh, more like development features. No, nothing got us beyond those limits. So whenever you plan to use a high-performance set cluster, keep in mind, this limit will sometime hit you on the feed. And if this is a problem for you, you need to change the setup. What we did, for example, as I said, there were only uh, eight hours each in each node. All the nodes are also doing iSCSI uh, outside set. Because iSCSI has less overhead, nearly nothing, compared to what uh, any other solution currently has. Uh, and is able to provide us, uh, let's say, 95% of the OS of the SSD speed and IOPS to the client. So whenever there is a need for a higher IOP than just the, what what set is able to deliver, uh, we switch to high setups because well, it worked for fast setups. The only reason you won't use that in production in some cases if, if the disk is gone or your host is gone, your data is gone. Um, so what you could do, what we did is we just used a bunch of ice cut disks and put some rate on top of it, or uh, in this case it's EFS, which had all the nasty stuff for us. But we achieved more with that setup than we could do with Ceph. On the other side, Ceph takes away a lot of our problems because we don't need to handle the failures that is more or less done automatically. Um, so we hope that in the near future, like in the next one to two releases, Ceph will become faster on this part because uh, with setups like that, um, you can, let's say, run nearly every bad workload on it. Because, like I said, 4K random write BIOS is the worst case you usually can get. That's not what you usually have in your setups, hopefully. If so, you probably won't spend uh, too much energy on Ceph because that probably limits you. But um, to have a solution which is able to fit for many use cases, Ceph is the only way uh, to go when you have a performance Ceph in this case. So I really hope that the next couple of months will bring a lot of performance into the USB. Someone of you is probably somehow connected to it, just push and move and 
spend time to re rewrite the code. Um, and then we hopefully get better numbers because this is a productive cluster which is still active. Um, we are not yet hitting the limit, that's uh, just tested. Um, but we will hit it in the next, let's say, two years. So hopefully, till then, there will be another solution other than just adding more nodes because at current state, that will be the only way to get more apps, adding more CPUs and nodes or buying other hardware because uh, this was into CPUs. Probably you might know that there are some different vendors with CPUs with more cores so we can have more apps available per server. And this would also be a possible solution to don't stick with just 10 cores, maybe go for 20 or more. Money for that. So I think that was enough numbers. Any questions? Just wait a moment for the microphone. You started speaking about an OST rewrite. Do you have any more details on um, what exactly are the parts? Is it a single thread that's doing too much? Or no, it's, it's basically, I, I uh, talked to uh, Sage and other guys from that uh, about this issue because they are aware of this issue. Uh, it's basically when the OSD demon was written back a couple of years ago, um, the code was just as it worked uh, because for, for a normal disk you would never use that. In. Now the code is just like, it does too much work on the CPU, which is maybe as if they don't need it anymore because we have other options to do stuff. And it just needs to be a, let's say, clean rewrite of it. So get rid of all the stuff we don't need anymore and speed up things which are currently blocking this. It's just like there's too many stuff, uh, stuff going on on the CPU side and inside the code, which is hopefully not needed anymore. And with some, let's say, clean rewrite, you probably get a lot more uh, performance out of it. It's just like what they have told me. Another question, um, You seem to have thoroughly tested it, and um, but the question is, um, did you saw any difference between read and write? I mean, everybody knows that Ceph is probably not the best solution for performance writes yes. because of its consistency. So uh, you just talked about IOS, but there's no difference between read and write. Yes, we did test the read IOS. They were, I, I don't have the numbers yet with me, but the, the read IOS are quite okay. <laughs> so there's no big deal about the, the read IOS. Um, because what you get over there is um, they get spread much more uh, within the cluster and it's much more or less work to so they are faster. So a, a read takes more time than a, a, sorry, a write takes more time than a read. So we get a little bit more out of it, but it's still not what you would achieve with without set. So the, the OSD still limit the limiting factor on this case. But any rough numbers? 50%? Oh, um, rough numbers. I, I have to dig it up, I'm not sure yet. I think it is like 30% more than with the right numbers. Another question? There's one there. Uh, yeah, uh, two questions. Uh, yeah. One, uh, in, have you any numbers on latency? Uh, did, you, did you do any, any yeah, latency performance? Uh, Unfortunately, we didn't. Because uh, in this case, uh, the, the latency we, we got because we were moving from a uh, NAS setup to the set. So the latency, the, sorry, the latency was already worth enough not to take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, but it, it's not like not the test story. And uh, have you tested with more cores? Uh, or uh, do you know if, if the OSD is written in a way that it can actually make use, use more cores per single yeah. OSD? Yeah. So you would add a different CPU with more cores, you would get more speed. That's the difference. So the only thing you need to, to take care of is the amount of cores you have uh, the gigahertz. If you get one with 5 gigahertz and even with only 10 cores, you would also get more performance. But the easiest way to uh, go beyond that limit would be adding more cores, which can be in the same server or with different ones. Yep. The other trick we have in China, maybe you saw in the Intel presentation, is that you can run several, you have enough gigahertz. You can run several OSDs per yes. System. You can partition it and run four or eight OSD processes. Yeah, we, we, we checked that too um, because uh, with what we saw, we have, we have numbers for each OSD or for each disk, uh, but they were only used with like 2K, 4K uh, IOPS in total. Uh, so if you, if you add more to one disk, you would separate the disk, but you would not raise the number of IOPS, unfortunately. That was the issue we were going to. So there was another one over here. 
kind of take off that question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyone else? Nope. You have numbers for today? <laughs> okay, so I hope you had a nice day. Enjoy today. And now it's time for the groups on that one. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs>